So guess what, everyone? It's a little bit more factoring now. So now we're on 6.3. This is graphing quadratics using the x-intercepts. So we're just going to go over a few things before we start and do an example. That uh, How are we going to get to x-intercept or factored form? So this was from Chapter 4, where we were able to find our x-intercepts to do our graphs. But initially, we didn't actually know how to get it to this form. Now we do because we know how to factor. So you'll see in the example that we'll be able to factor to get our x-intercepts. Recall from last section that we found the roots. The roots was when it equaled 0, and it made the statement true. Remember from Chapter 4 that roots were also called zeros, which were also called x-intercepts. So by factoring, we're able to get it into our x-intercept form, which says all those three different things. If you remember, again, also back from Chapter 4, is that if we have those x-intercepts, we can also find the vertex. And we'll talk about how to do that, but if you remember, we had the x-intercepts, we added them up, we divided by 2 to find halfway, and then we subbed it into the equation to be able to find the full coordinates of the vertex. And we also be, should be able to go backwards, and if given a graph, be able to generate the equation, and that will be example 3 right here. So if we stick with our example, first example, we have this quadratic right here. And again, it's a simple trinomial. You can do it, there could be complex, there could be perfect squares. And so if you'd like to see an example of a perfect square, that would be on page 286 on your in your textbook. And uh, that would show you how to do it with a perfect square. But it's all the same steps. So to start, we have to graph it using the x-intercepts and the vertex. So if we're going to graph, that means we need our x-intercepts, which means we need it in factored form. To get this in factored form, since it's a simple trinomial, we can go right to our skeleton. And we're looking for two numbers that multiply to get negative 7, and those same two numbers have to add to get negative 6, which would be negative 7 and plus 1. Now remember, to find the x-intercepts, or the roots, or the zeros, this was when the quadratic equals 0. Which, if you recall back from before, any x-intercept has a y equal to 0 which is why we set it equal to 0. Now we set each bracket equal to 0, just like in 6.2, and then we solve. So we have x equals 7 and x equals negative 1. So these are our x-intercepts, which we can now put on the graph. So as you can see, I've put an x-intercept of 1, an x-intercept, sorry, so I just erased that. It should have been negative 1 here. So I've put an x-intercept of negative 1, an x-intercept of 7, and uh, now we need to find the vertex. So remember, the vertex is taking our x-intercepts and finding halfway between it. So we can go 7 plus negative 1 divided by 2. Well, 7 minus 1 is 6 divided by 2. And so 6 divided by 2 is 3. This is the x-coordinate of our vertex. Now we just need to find our y-coordinate. That should have been divided by 2. So we take our equation, y equals x squared. Well, our x right now is 3 minus 6 times 3 minus 7. And if we solve this, so after solving, then we have that our vertex is 3 comma negative 16. And now with our scale, that would be 3, 1, 2, 3. I've just gone up by 1s. And then you go all the way down to negative 16, which in my graph is off of it. Then you can get your pen, and you can connect all of your dots. Remember, it curves at the vertex, and then arrows go on the end. And again, it's a sketch, but it should be more accurate than this. So I should have done a scale of maybe 2s or 4s to be able to make sure I hit that negative 16. But that's how you can find your vertex. Remember, you're adding them up, divide by 2, and then you sub your answer back into the equation to get the y value of your vertex. There's one other key feature that you could also find, and that is your y-intercept. And if you recall how to find the y-intercept, that is when x equals 0. If you sub x equals 0 into this, your y-intercept would be negative 7. So that's another key point that you could have put on this. If you have any questions about what we've done here, make sure you write those down. Now we're going to look at the second example, which is having to determine the equation. Now we have seen this before. This is where you're taking your x-intercepts, which remember we know x-intercept form or factored form is in this form. So we can take those x-intercepts and we can put them in. And remember, even looking back to this one, inside the bracket, we had negative 7 and positive 1. But when we solve for them, it's the opposite signs. 
So if we have negative 1 and positive 5, when we put that into our bracket, we end up with x plus 1 and x minus 5. So remember, it's the opposites. We haven't found the whole equation, though. We have to use our vertex, which is given here, and this is x comma y. Notice that we have y, a, x, and x. So we can put that vertex in. So we have negative 9 equals a, 2 plus 1, and 2 minus 5. And so we've just taken this point that's given and put it into our equation. So we have negative 9 equals a, and then 3, negative 3. And so negative 9 equals a times a negative 9. And then we can divide this negative 9 to the other side. And so our a value is 1. So you can say your final equation is x plus 1 and x minus 5. And if this had asked for it in standard quadratic form, that would be ax squared plus bx plus c. Now how do we get this into that form right there? Well, if you remember from last chapter, that would be by expanding. So you could do whichever strategy you want and expand it, and it would still be what this equation is. So now you, need, now you know how to go from standard to factored form and how to generate that equation. If you have any questions, please make sure you write them down. We'll see you in class.